Hey guys, it's Vince. Today I want to discuss a new solution to an age-old problem that's plagued CNC for quite some time. Um, and when I say CNC, I'm talking about primarily retrofit systems. Um, guys that are just building their machines and are going to do a slave axis configuration, if you're doing a single axis, you're fine. Okay, I mean, you can go into Mach 3, slave the axis you're requiring, and you're all set. You know, whether it be A, if you're using a G540, if you're slaving an A axis to X or Y, you're, you're good to go. You can do it through the software. It's a very simple process. No big deal. Um, I was dealing with a potential client. We were discussing a system. He wanted to do a retrofit. That's what drove me to create this design that you see before you. And his retrofit that he needs done, he has a nine axis foam cutter based from a company out of France. So let me tell you the dilemma that this individual has with his business, like so many of you out there will have if you don't take heed on what I'm explaining to you because I'm telling you right now, this is all factual. If you go and buy proprietary equipment in this industry, the company that you purchase that stuff from, they are gonna look at that equipment and say, we're gonna keep this equipment as complex as possible because when you need help servicing that unit, and guys, trust me, you will need help servicing the unit they feel that you'll go right directly to them why because path of least resistance you're always going to go to the manufacturer as soon as they start then telling you well it's costing you this it's costing you that and blah 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 blah, blah. in this particular case this individual was told prices in excess of four or five thousand dollars on certain components um motors a motor needed to replace or excuse me a driver needed to be replaced and again they were holding them hostage so to speak and that's what so many times happens they hold you guys hostage if you buy a proprietary system from a company they have every right to make you buy their components to keep that system running if and only if you continue to do business with that company they're going to do that every chance they can on top of the fact that if that company, and I always bring this up because it happens a lot in this industry, I deal with a lot of guys and they all tell me the same thing. Oh, I bought this system from this company. I was really happy with it. And then all of a sudden they went out of business. And if you go, if they go out of business, guys, you're SOL again. You're stuck retrofitting another machine. After we've discussed this guy's uh, issues, I went over and when he told me that this machine was a nine axis machine, I was kind of astounded because it didn't have PLC, it didn't have anything ridiculous. Um, when he told me the size of the motors of the particular machine, he said that on the x-axis it had four motors running in a slave configuration and each motor is only rated at 100 ounce inches. So let's do the math here. You've got 400 ounce inch motors on this chassis on the x and the y axis. And then on the z axis he has one motor because again the machine is only cutting foam. So we're dealing with a very light substrate. We're dealing with a situation that you have an individual who is basically locked to this company because he knows, as well as I know, Mach 3 UCCNC motion control software does not go past six axis. What that means is you can slave one axis in Mach 3. What you cannot do is slave one axis over and over and over and over again. It won't happen. You can't slave your X axis, you know, to allocate five other drives to it or four other drives to it. It just doesn't happen. So what that means is we have to come up with a physical solution to this, to this issue. We have to split the step and direction signals coming off an individual axis breakout board. Okay, so what you see before you for this kit, I want to just reiterate, this from the beginning will not work with the G540. Okay, there's a lot of guys out there who think that they can split, you know, I'll have two motors run on a single drive. There's guys that do it, it will work, it's not best practice. And best practice means you should avoid doing it because potentially you'll blow up your drive. There's no point in doing that. Okay, you do things right or you don't do them at all. That's the way I look at it. However, for the guys out there that, that are carefree, do what you want to do. I'm just giving you my recommendation. That being said, if you're using an individual breakout board, this is my six axis, you can split the step and direction signals going to multiple drivers. This is the easiest way to give you a a slave access system that would exceed that of a normal system where most systems they would slave an individual access which would then be done through Mach 3 or UCCNC this system would allow you to expand upon that 
up to nine other axis on, or I should say nine other motors on the individual axis. So let's think about that for a minute. All we're doing is taking the step and direction signals right here, two and three, step and direction, and we're, we're coming over here to my toolless terminal splitters. And what you see before you, which looks like a very simple design, it's, it is simple. I mean, the, the whole characteristic of it is simple on paper. But what we need to consider is the fact that we are sending signals, and these signals must be clean. And therefore, inside this heat shrink that you see before you is tin copper braid, okay? And what that is is shielding, guys, okay? So what you're seeing before you is a cable I made out of silicone cable. Okay, so I'm actually making individual cables for this assembly to keep your cables as clean as far as signals go as they possibly can be. That being said, you can also see the silicone leads that are actually going to the mounts that go through your chassis. So what you see here with this screw, you would drill one hole here in your chassis and one hole here for the opposite side. It would mount with the terminal post coming up. And then you use your thumb nuts after you use the nut and the washer down here to secure it to the, to the base of the chassis. You could then mount these in and you could, of course, you have a couple of mounting options. You can mount them over under like you see here, using, utilizing the thumb nuts, which I highly recommend for toolless option of, of dismounting this and getting it out of your system. Or you could take these thumb nuts off and take this terminal right here, or excuse me, this terminal block right here and this terminal block right here and just lift it off and mount it wherever you'd like. That is why you see two individual wires being used instead of a cable. If I used a cable, you couldn't separate these terminal blocks. However, if I want to come in here and separate these, all you would do, let's see if I can do this one-handed, is come over here and you would just do this. Now, you can mount this one wherever you want in your chassis, and this do the same. And then again, you, you could see your circle clips here, which would, of course, encompass these type of clips to mount your step and direction signals for your drive that will be included in the kit. You could then take this and ground this wherever you want, or, of course, ground it right back to your mounts. Okay? So again, you can see how the kit works. Very, very simple. And again, super easy to maintain, which is what we're going for anyways with yourself. Um, trying to maintain your own equipment that's what i'm i'm utterly going for i want you guys to be able to empower yourselves to actually uh maintain your own equipment service your own equipment if you want to buy parts you buy parts you can buy them from anybody you want i don't want to lock you in like so many do that are proprietary that to me is it should be illegal as far as i'm concerned especially when they know what kind of money you guys are spending but um they really don't care about earning your business. It's all about, you know, how difficult we can make things to keep you keep coming back for more and more money. And to me, that's not the way to earn business. So everybody's different. I get asked that a lot because a lot of guys will ask me, you know, which which is the best way to do, you know, to, to do a retrofit. And, and the first thing out of my mouth is always make sure you're not buying proprietary. Because if you buy proprietary, that's what you're dealing with. So in this instance right now, what you see here will work to mechanically split the step and direction signals. So one step and direction signal, which in this case would be for X, we're splitting the X axis to support up to nine individual drives just through the step and direction signals. The breakout board has one set of step and direction signals allocated to X axis, but when you go to the terminal blocks here, being they're individualized, you can then support up to nine other drivers and motors on this axis. Now, there's some guys out there who will think they'll do this. What do I need to ac accomplish that? You will require another driver, and you will require for every driver, of course, another motor. And therefore, if in just like this client's case, he has four motors on one particular axis like the X, he would hook up four drives and four motors, and he's good to go. And then he's got his X axis all working together. Now, some guys are out there saying right now, I hear you already, you're saying, well, how does he get the motors to go in the opposite direction if they're not you know, mounted the same way? Because, of course, if one's mounted to the left, it's going to spin oppositely to the one mounted on the right. Well, the easiest way to do that is just wire in your coils from your steppers backwards, and that'll make the motor mechanically go backwards. 
Okay, so where we usually and where I always encourage you guys to go through Mach 3 and use the software to do the work for you. In this instance, you actually have to manually do the work, but if you're willing to manually do the work, look at what you're getting. You know, your, your expandability here is virtually endless. You know, if you have a three axis breakout board, you could do this on three axis and you could put as many slave virtually. I don't know any, any system that would require nine motors. I mean, to help it, I mean, let's be realistic. Uh, but overall, what I'm showing you is it's endless capabilities. And again, being that these signals are shielded, you have a system that is ready to go. And of course, once it's connected to the base of the chassis, you then have your drain wire connected, which means that the grounding is working properly. So again, this is what I had to come up with. Um, and a lot of guys out there are probably wondering, you know, because again, this has been discussed on a lot of forums, how real this works. Um, and I can't emphasize enough, I, I myself, I, I played with it, I already tested the experiment, I know these work. Not only do I know they work, I also contacted uh, Marcus, and you can see right here, I uh, know that should not be an issue, current draw, eight, eight milliamps. If you're running them all the same power supply, make sure you have enough current, and that should not be any problems, and that's it. So I can tell you right now, this will definitely work. Um, I've done it myself. I got over 700 IPM naturally mounted off a table just to do an experiment and see exactly what we've got. Um, this works without, without any harm done um, to anything, especially your drives. Again, doing this kind of setup is not something most guys will encounter or require. But for the systems out there that, that are looking at for the guys out there, I should say, that are looking at retrofitting a system that's older, has a, a ridiculous amount of motors and a ridiculous amount of drivers, and you ask yourself why, because again, we're looking at 100 ounce motors on, and four of them on one axis instead of just using one 400 ounce. That, I don't understand it. Or making the, mechanical, the mechanics of the machine done to where the transmission could utilize one motor, that's by far more efficient. But they figure, let's keep it as complex as possible because keeping complexity means that it'll perplex you to always go back to them. Once again, that proprietary lock-in is something that cannot be avoided. So I, if you guys have the means and can build a system yourself, I, I totally recommend that. If you don't have the means, please be careful when you start purchasing proprietary items because when you start dealing with CNC components, it's it's like I said, it's kind of like the Wild West of the 90s with Dell Computers and so many other manufacturers where these systems were coming out and everything was proprietary. You had to buy memory, proprietary. You had to buy, you know, hell, they wanted to make it to where software was proprietary. So, I mean, realistically, as long as they own that that build capacity they're going to sit there and say well everything you need you have to buy from me and you are always locked in and of course with europe just so you guys know if you buy a system in europe or buy it in china their holidays aren't necessarily our holidays so if this guy's system goes down in august and they're on you know a vacation over there you might be down for a couple weeks if that's acceptable to you and your business now try to support your family like that that's what I always try to empower you guys to realize. Every machine, every design that I do, I want you guys to be able to service that unit yourself. When a guy asks me, you know, when I designed, uh, as a matter of fact, you've seen my my uh, new enclosure that I've just released, the ProGrade CNC enclosure, the EMI shielded one. Um, that design is very simple for you guys to work on yourself. It even comes with the schematics. The breakout board comes with a schematic. Nobody does that in this industry. You can check that out. 98% of them, unless you say, hey guys, is there a way I can get a schematic or something to work on this system yourself? Yet, in the US, under most electrical codes, I know in Florida, it's virtually mandatory that they have in a breaker box at least allocation to what each breaker is. Um, you guys, when we think about electronics like this that could be running your, your business, it's frightening to think that these companies do that to us. So when you see a design like this and you think, well, it's a shame we can't do all this in the software. It's a shame we you know, have to go through the mechanical way of doing it, but it's a very viable solution. It's safe. It's just unfortunate that we have to do this, but it's nice to know that we now have a way to do it right. And again, if you guys do have any questions, I can custom make this. And again, for this client, I am gonna be custom making these. 
um, he needs two of them. Um, again, the cables are custom made. I can make these in any length you require. Um, I would ask if you do need one to please just naturally let me know what length you require and also what color wiring. I can tell you the colors I have available. Of course, inside the tin braided copper, I only use silicone wire. And again, silicone is used just for the flexibility and of course the heat resistance. This is the easiest wire to work with, guys. So other than that, I hope that this has answered some questions and I hope you guys really are careful when you're buying things. I can't emphasize that enough. You know, whether you, whether you buy from me or not, whatever, you know, for whatever you take off these videos, be careful, you know, because I own a small business, okay? And I respect other small business owners or guys who are willing to take that chance. I know the risk involved. I understand, you know, the late nights and the time that you spend trying to make things right. And nothing will upset you worse than when you're working with a company. And really, you got to you know really take that into consideration when you buy a system from someone you are teaming up with that company because they are basically providing your company the tools to manufacture so if you're not willing to look that deep in and say oh that's just a machine I need it'll do the job well yeah it'll do the job but what if something breaks what if I need a you know a part in the middle of the night or something goes down or a clients expecting a part at you know the next day at noon and it's already midnight and I'm trying to get these parts now. I mean, I've heard these situations and I'm telling you, you don't want to be in that predicament. So if anything, um, whether you like my videos or you don't like my videos for all my supporters out there, you know, God bless you guys. Thank you very much for everything you've done. Um, and I'm going to keep creating more products and more videos like this to help solve whatever we can do to get even older machines, because nothing I enjoy more than retrofitting older machines and bringing back our heritage to life. Because I'll tell you guys, an old machine, if it's kept up with or even rebuilt, they're easily as good as the new ones. So just keep that in mind. And again, if you guys do have any questions, don't be afraid to ask. I'll do my best. Of course, uh, I am busy, but I'll schedule a time. If you do want to discuss anything, we'll schedule a time to talk and take care of it. Thank you. Take care.